when I was eight years old, a stranger moved in next door. The very first time we went out of our yard and I saw him, he said, hey kids, hey kids, have you seen my dog? And he just wanted one picture and he would give me a bunch of money. Nobody had ever done something or said something like that. You see, I didn't know what I know now. Because it was red, that meant I was eight years old and I was for sale. I was human trafficked for two and a half years. They sold us each day as if we were just a product. Every day I had to be there at three o'clock. Every day, three to six, I climbed up a fire escape to go into a window to go into his house. If the window was open, it meant come, come in. If the window was closed, it meant I could go home. All I knew was what that window told me to do. There would be strangers there waiting. I'd see the money exchanged. I knew that they were paying to have sex with me and that I was going to be raped. I would be undressed, waiting in a corner, just waiting for what came next. Every day, every day I cried myself to sleep. I prayed. I just kept feeling like, I felt like in a way, in a strange way, that I felt like Jesus had a plan for my life. This time the window was open. I mean, it was open. I didn't even know what to think or what to do. We went inside and everything was gone. I remember laying there and making like snow angels on the carpet. And as I waved my arms, I just kept saying, it's over. It'll never happen again. It's over. It'll never happen again. It was the first time ever I really knew what happiness was. I've had numerous surgeries and, and had to get reproductive surgeries. I knew by 19 years old that I wouldn't be able to have kids. And each day I know that God has a plan and a purpose, just like he told me when I was a little kid laying in my bed crying at night and not understanding how any of this made sense or how any of this was gonna work out. But that little seed of hope that kept me all of these years was that God had a plan and a purpose. And today, I live that. I live that destiny. And He restored my voice and even my faith in people. I went back to the actual house, right to the room where everything happened. And I decreed and I declared and I actually spoke over what had happened to us. And I just called it back in and I just announced that it stops here, it stops today, and that today is new. And from this time forward, I'm taking back what was stolen from me. This day forward, I'm going to be a voice for the children who cry in silence. I decided to stand up. I decided to fight. I decided to take back what was stolen from me. Each day I make that decision. I started fighting in the field of the anti-trafficking movement. And today, I'm an international speaker. I'm a registered nurse, and especially in forensics. I work with law enforcement. I teach new cadets at the police academy. I teach nurses, medical professionals, um, coalitions, neighborhood community events, and I teach other survivors, I mentor, and I get to work with children. I get to teach them how to identify the signs and how to respond. I wish somebody would have done it for me. I wish somebody would have seen the pain that all those little kids were going through as we went to that house. But just like that, 
things can change. And just like that, it did. You see, these children, they cry in silence that you would be the eyes and ears and maybe even be their voice. No matter what you've been through, what your journey's been like, each one of us has a purpose and a destiny.